Well, hello, this is Jeff Bennett with another episode of Key Conversations. And these interviews are with people who have made an important contribution to Christian music and the arts. And my guest today is multi-talented drummer, former child star and executive director of Ballet Magnificat, Keith Thibodeau. Keith, welcome. Thank you, Jeff. You pronounced my name right. Hey. <laughs> Keith first came to national attention as the drum playing son of Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz on the classic TV show, I Love Lucy. He began drumming at two years old and it was during that time was quickly labeled a prodigy. This talent led Keith to star as Little Ricky in the I Love Lucy uh, show from 1956 to 1959. And then he played Opie Taylor's best friend, Johnny Paul on the Andy Griffith show from 1962 to 1966. And then as an adult, Keith became the drummer for the band David and the Giants, who toured extensively through the United States and abroad. He's been featured in Newsweek, People Magazine, has been the guest on the Today Show, Entertainment Tonight, and Good Morning America. In 1991, Keith joined his wife Kathy on the road with Ballet Magnificat, which we're going to talk about, where he now serves as executive director. Not only did you work professionally on the show, but you were a frequent guest at Lucy and, uh, and Ricky's house to play with Desi and, and uh, Junior and Lucy. Even though you were very young, share some of those memories uh, about the studio, about rehearsal, about taping the show and that kind of thing. Um, uh, man, well, Jeff, it was, uh, it was such a amazing experience to be thrown into that, 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 that time in Hollywood, um, uh, when, uh, you know, Lucy and Desi, they had one of the most popular shows in Hollywood. Um, and, you know, the first time I went to the set, um, to audition for the show, uh, I was this little bitty four-year-old boy, you know, five-year-old, four-and-a-half-year-old boy. And uh, Lucy looked at me as my dad brought me to the set and said, uh, said well, he's cute, but, but what does he do? And my dad said, well, he, he plays the drums. And she said, oh, come on, you know. And she goes, well, listen, there's a set over there. Our drummers, uh, orchestras, drums are over there. Tell him to play those drums. And so I went over there and started playing the drums. And and uh, just started jamming on the drums because I was a professional drummer when I was two years old or three wow. years old with the Horace Hyde show. Um, so they were amazed that this little kid could play that good. And I looked like Desi too at the time. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, you know, the guys came around the set and, but just being on the set um, uh, as Desi, uh, you know, eventually, came into the, the scene there and he saw me playing the drums and he said, uh, stood up and laughed and said, I think we found little Ricky. So wow. they signed me to a seven year contract with Desi Lou. And from that moment on, uh, I was part of their family and uh, I wasn't to call Lucy, uh, Miss Ball. I was to call her Lucy and Desi, Desi, not wow. Mr. Arnaz, mm -hmm. because it was almost like we were all like, family and workers, you know, uh, there on the set. And that audition that was a national search, over 200 children were auditioning for that role that you got, wasn't, weren't there? Yeah, they, they kind of stopped the process when I, when I, when I came on and mm -hmm. Desi says, I think we found little Ricky. It was, it was an amazing, wow. amazing moment. Yeah. In your book, uh, you talk about, um, frequently being in the Arnaz home to play with uh, Desi and Lucy. What was that like? I'm sure it was very different in the home than it actually was working on the set with them. Yeah, I was one of the, the, the trusted people that Lucy uh, uh, allowed to be around her house and uh, to play with her children. Mm -hmm. And so I got to know uh, their children. Uh, you know, we grew up together. We were like brothers and sisters. Yeah, Lucy, uh, Lucy and I, Lucy Jr. was about the same age as, and then Desi was a couple of years younger. I think he was, I think he's two years younger. Uh, but we, you know, we got along very, very well. It, it was just a, a different uh, atmosphere over at their house. Uh, I came from a, a, a Catholic uh, South Louisiana family. Um, here I am in Beverly Hills with, you know, two of the biggest stars in Hollywood. 
and their children and, and, and Jack Benny lives next door and, and, and uh, Jimmy Stewart lives several houses down from them. And so it's just this whole surreal world. But uh, there was uh, just uh, an unhappiness mm-hmm. and a tension and uh, there wasn't a lot of peace that 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 I recognized as a child when I when I would go over there. It was just a completely different uh, scenario, uh, one that that um, that I, you know, I knew the real story. You know, I knew I knew how their marriage was. I knew I saw, you know, their fighting and and the uh, the slamming of the doors, and it it would just it would scare me as a child, you know. Uh, and it was hard for Lucy and Desi, of course, their children, to, to grow up in that kind of uh, family. When did it hit you that you were a part of something really big and groundbreaking? Uh, and when that realization happened, how did it change you, even as a kid? You know, I remember after one episode, you know, I was driving back from uh, the show in Hollywood. My dad and I were in, in the car and, you know, he would always, you know, we kind of wrap up you know how you, how I did you know you did well Keith you know or whatever you didn't you know you could have done better you know and uh but I, I think I did pretty good that that particular show and it might have been might have been the Babalu show it might have been the one of the shows that I did but you know I I said I asked my dad I said dad why did God choose me mm. to be little Ricky you know he could have chose any little boy in the world but he chose me to be on, on this show. And I remember uh, my dad said uh, to me that God, Keith has a purpose for you. Mm-hmm. You know, God, you know, God has a purpose bigger than you can know. And he didn't even know what he was saying, of course, at that time, but, and, and I, that just stuck with me. I know that that experience is still very important uh, in your life and was a part of shaping who you are. Uh, and, um, to have worked on a show like that with still what is unquestionably the greatest actress uh, of all time. Well, it is. It's it's very cool to be able to to remember the the times we sat around the dinner table with Lucy and, and her husband and, and, uh, you know, would have conversations and, and uh, just, just being a part of that whole mix, uh, part of their family. I, I remember when Lucy would, uh, would bring Desi Jr. and I like warm milk before we went to bed to help us sleep uh, at their home in Del Mar, California on the beach. And, and when she, we'd wake up and she would be, she had cooked some fish, you know, just, just little, little moments like that, that were normal. Right. Uh, but yet not normal. Well, you obviously continued your music interest in college, and this is where you met David Huff and his brothers and uh, became the drummer for what was first called Little David and the Giants. Uh, and you guys were not a Christian band at first. Is that right? Right. Uh, we were a, a secular rock band that had played in clubs and, and uh, colleges around the South. Um, did some recording in Muscle Shoals, um, you know, that famous uh, recorded people like Aretha Franklin and the Rolling Stones and all these people like that. Um, the, the band was with Capitol and, and United Artists, and um, we were well known in the New Orleans area and, and um, had, a, had a sort of a semi, uh, semi spectacular hit called 10 Miles High and uh, super love and which which got kind of big in the in the UK and and uh, the northern soul music scene so um, but um, then I went to college you know before that uh, but I, I realized that you know my my future would lie in, in in playing in a band not going to college because it was like I wanted to hit the ground running you know it was the sex drugs and rock and roll time and it was like, you know, I, I just wanted to have fun and and get out of the house and get out get out of the the restraints of uh, of my my family and and um, and those kinds of things. What was it that transpired for the band to change from a pop group to a Christian group? Uh, well, we I came from my my, my parents uh, eventually separated and divorced. My dad had an had an affair. 
and uh, he worked in one of the studios in, in California. And uh, that was kind of like the, the beginning of my rebellion and my shaking my fist, uh, so to speak, at God. I was raised Catholic and uh, I believed in God, but, but I didn't know him, of course. And so it, it, it was at that point that I, I, I took my journey away from, um, you know, what, what I thought was the good thing to do and to be the good boy and got into drinking, smoking and all this kind of stuff. And so just all that uh, joined David and the Giants, the rock band, lived in Laurel, Mississippi, uh, just tried every drug there was possibly to do. Uh, had sex and different, you know, all these different things that, that you think of when you think of the rock and roll world, something was missing in my life. I just began, began to be more sad. I looked at Hollywood like something, Jeff, that was just something that was so far behind me. And, and, but I, it, it was like something that haunted me. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was at that point that uh, I began to get clinically depressed. Um, and, and also I began to have suicidal thoughts. And I just got to the end of my rope. You know, I thought, well, if, you, if I don't do something, if God doesn't intervene in my life, I'm, ge- I'm going to either die or I'm going to end up in a mental institution. Mm-hmm. And it was at that point that I cried out to God one night on a, on a waterbed in Laurel, Mississippi. And I said, Lord, if you're real, save me out of this mess I made for myself. Because at that point, you know, I'd given my life to the devil. I dated witches. I did all kind of different crazy things in my life I said God I need a miracle I need you to show up and so he did two weeks later my mom invited me to a a meeting in in South Louisiana and it was at this meeting that I met Jesus Christ I had a vision of Jesus Christ I talked about in my book and uh, it changed my life and I went back to the guys and you asked you know what what made the change from a pop group to a Christian group and it was the fact that um that I I came to the Lord. I was born again. I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I told the guys, there's more to the Bible than what men have led us to believe. Mm. I said, we need to change our music, guys. We we need to to change the lyrics, keep the same style, but change the lyrics. And and so they looked at at me and they said, uh, you know, you'll be okay, Keith. Uh, You know, this drug, whatever you're doing will wear Mm. off. Yeah, it's good for you or whatever, but we're not going to be able to make any money doing that. And so I just kept talking about Jesus. And eventually David uh, Huff, uh, the guitar player and, uh, of David and the Giants, he, um, he came to the Lord and his brother, uh, who are twins, his brothers are twins who played in the band. They began to have Bible studies and uh, came to the Lord. And, and uh, eventually, a couple of years later, they all came to God and we formed as a Christian band, David and the Giants. It's still so amazing. Uh, You mentioned you grew up Catholic, um, not necessarily in a Christian home, but even one night on the way home from taping, you asked your dad, why did God choose me? As God so miraculously does in our lives, he begins at at our moment of birth with a plan. And even though you didn't understand it, obviously there was something of God working in you, even at that very early age, to even ask that question. And yes. God had such a plan for your life, uh, which is incredible to look back on at this point, isn't it? It is. It, it really is. And it's that sense of that presence of God, knowing that God was watching me. Um, you know, and I had this, this stupid view, Jeff, that because I was on the Isle of Lucy show, that for some reason, God saw me more than he saw other boys. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like the visibility of being where in, in that that arena somehow got more of attention to, to God, but it really doesn't. And 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 that's the truth. I wow. mean, God sees the the janitor. He sees the the people who aren't in in the limelight mm-hmm. just as much as he sees anybody else. Though you still play with David and Giants from time to time, you guys officially uh, stopped as a band, but you came back together a few years ago, began touring, and still are playing together a little bit, right? That's right. We're uh, we still play, and and I, I can't believe it. I mean, we're a bunch of old guys that uh, that get together and, and rock for the rock, and uh, <laughs> we, we 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 put out an album called "What Are You Waiting For." Um, 
not too long ago, 2019. Mm. And we, we put out some live albums and we tour. We're going to be up in Indiana coming up soon in Illinois. So even though you're still getting to uh, have your drummer chops, which is a lot of fun, I know the main hat you wear and have worn for quite some time is executive director of Ballet Magnificat. Share with us what is Ballet Magnificat? Well, Ballet Magnificat is a ballet that was formed to present the gospel of Jesus Christ um, to the widest possible audience through dance. And so what we do is we have ballet dancers who uh, who have faith in the Lord that come here to train, work, and, and um, possibly become part of our company uh, that tours all over the United States and the world um, for the gospel. And we do it through story ballets. We do it through worship ballets. We, we partner with churches uh, across the nation, big, small, medium, uh, for different various events and functions. Outreach. And, uh, Kathy is the uh, founder and artistic director, your wife, Kathy, of Ballet Magnifica. And uh, it is amazing, a silver uh, medal winner uh, in her profession. Uh, she rose to uh, prominence very early, like you in her career. When you guys either are playing with David and the Giants or you're with uh, Kathy and Ballet Magnificat, uh, what is the connection that is still there uh, between sharing the gospel and music and sharing the gospel and the arts and, and the people that watch that? I think it's the heart of, of those people that do it. I think, uh, you know, you either have a heart of worship uh, and you have a heart of worship stemming from your belief, uh, un, unswerving belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what that's what propels us. That's what propels people that are uh, genuine, you know, God's looking for genuine worship. He's not work. He's not looking for a uh, contrived worship. You know, it, it's, it's, it's a thing of the heart. And that shows with Ballet Magnificat because, um, you know, we, I was reading today, you know, where it talks about God saved us through Jesus Christ so that we might bring forth fruit unto God, not to be under the law, and so we, we we're bringing fruit that that it, that means something mm -hmm. to the Lord. And I think our worship and praise is part of all that that gives him the praise. We are built innately hungry and to thirst for the word of God and for uh, the authenticity of who he is. And um, the more I serve the Lord, the more I'm still amazed by his grace uh, on my life, still mourning by mourning his mercies uh, and his love and his grace and his freshness uh, yes. for us is new and it's creative yeah. and it never gets old. That's right. You know, that, that, that reminds me of the Psalm 149, let the children of Zion rejoice in their king, let them praise his name with a dance. You know, if, if it wasn't in the word of God, we probably wouldn't be doing it, right. you know, to be honest with you, as far as ballet and, and music. Uh, and, but I believe that God has made it that way and created it that way for such a time as this. Well, Keith, I can't thank you enough uh, for your time uh, with me this morning. We continue to pray God's blessings on you and Kathy as you share Jesus through music and the arts and uh, through Ballet Magnificat. God bless you guys. Thank you, Brother Jeff. Appreciate you.